Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is compatibility. So compatibility are relationships which have to do with geometry, geometric relationships. So the compatibility are all the relationships that connect uh, the displacement field U uh, to elongation of the bars delta to the strain in the bar epsilon. So all the relationships which have to do with the geometry of the bar uh, and how the length of the bar changes at different points, and later on it's going to have to do with other kind of geometric constraints, those fall under compatibility. So compatibility are all the geometric constraints equation. So in a problem like this, in which we had a force F applied to the block, and the block can move left and right. Uh, in this kind of system, essentially everything is controlled by the fact that the block moves. And as the block moves, the bar changes their length. So the kind of relationship we're going to find are relationship between the displacement of the block, the elongation of the bars, and so on. So the important uh, uh, character in our story, the main character of the story on top of everything is the displacement. Uh, in order to say which way the displacement is going, you don't look at the direction of the forces. It's not like the displacement is defined in this case in this direction, and in this case is defined in this direction. Re remember that displacement is always positive along the coordinate axis. So in order for me to tell you which way the displacement is, I have to decide which way my x-axis go, because the, the displacement is positive with the x-axis. So if that's my x-axis direction, then a positive displacement of this block will be in this direction. And let's define the displacement of the block and say that the displacement of the block, we're going to call it u star here. So u star is how much the block displaces. Now we're going to find the relationship between how much the block displaces and how much is the elongation of the bar. So let's say that this is bar 1, and this bar here is bar 2. And if we want, we can even give names to the different sections of bar 1 and bar 2. Let's say that this is section A, this is section B, this is section C, and this is section D. And the elongation of the bar is always, can always be expressed as the displacement at x equal L at the end of the bar minus the displacement at the, the beginning of the bar, x equals 0. So, in this case, with x going this way, the displacement at x equal l is going to be the displacement of section b, and the displacement at x equal is 0 is going to be the displacement of section a. Now, section b is attached to the cart. The cart or the block is rigid. It doesn't deform. So if the block displaces by u star, then the displacement of section b, which is on the block, is going to be u star. u a is nothing. It's 0, because a is at the wall, and the wall doesn't move. So we have the, the, the elongation of bar 1, delta 1, is ub minus ua, which is going to simply equal e to the displacement of the block u star. Similarly, for bar 2, I can do the same game. I can say that the, the elongation, sorry, of bar 2, the elongation of bar 2, I can say is equal to ud minus uc, u of x equal l minus u of x equal 0, ud minus uc. UD is attached to the block, so it's U star. UC is attached to the wall, so it's 0. So also the, the elongation of bar 2 is simply equal to U star. And so you see that by the definition of what elongation is and the fact that the block is rigid, I find that delta 1 is equal to delta 2. And so this is what I would call my compatibility relationship for uh, this block over here. Typically, when I say, what does compatibility tell you about this system? Well, it tells you that the bars are attached to a rigid block, so the block displaces them must have the same elongation. Instead of going through this whole discussion over here, you can also get to the same, exactly the same answer, simply by saying, well, if the block displaces by a certain amount, you star, and so this is where the block ends up after it displaces. Well, these bars are attached to this block, so if the bars are attached to the block, what can they do? They must go along for the ride. The sections go along for the ride. And so you see that as the block displaces, there is nothing else that can happen just by looking at the deformed shape of the structure. 
by looking at the deformed shape of the structure, you can see that there is no other option but say the two bars must elongate by the same amount. So you get to the same thing. But to obtain this in terms of compatibility, compatibility equation relate elongation to displacements. And from these equations here, you can get directly a, um, an equation that connects the two elongations. Uh, then all the other thing that you can do is you can get a relationship between the strains in the two bars. So remember that you can always write that the elongation is equal to the integral of the strain as a function of position along the bar in the x. So this relationship here always works, where l is the length of the bar. Oh, in all this uh, uh, relationship over here, I said x equal l, x equal 0. I didn't tell you that l is the length of the bar. When you do compatibility relationships, you need dimensions because you're dealing with geometry. So I take for granted that L was the length of the bar, but I should have told you this is the length of the bar. So the elongation of each bar is going to be the integral of strain over the length of the bar. Now, as we know, there are special conditions in which the strain is constant along the length of the bar. So we learn how to do this relationship for linear elastic materials, and we said, you know, if uh, the cross-section is constant if the uh, materials on each cross-section are the same, and if the axial force in the bar is constant, then the strain is uniform along the length of the bar. And this is the same also now if we deal with elastic plastic behavior, viscoelastic behavior, thermal strain, and so on. So the basic idea is this. If, if you have a bar, and a longer bar can be bar 1 or bar 2. So if you have a bar, and a longer bar you have a constant uh, internal force resultant. Then what it means is, and by constant I mean uniform along the length of the bar, what it means is that each, every section of the bar is going to feel the same internal force resultant. And if each section is the same, so each section of this bar looks the same as the section next to it, it can be a same elastic material, but it can also be the same elastic plastic material, the same viscoelastic material. It doesn't matter as long as they're all the same material, then there is no reason why one section will feel different from another section or why the two sections would have different strains. So if the bars are uniform along the length, so the, if there is uniformity along the length of the bar, And what by uniform along the, the length, it means that A is uniform, the cross-section is uniform, and the material are uniform. Whatever is the composition of the section is the same at all section. And if there is the same cross-sectional area, if there is the same internal force resultant along the uh, bar, so the, the force resultant is uniform. So also if there is a uniform and so under these conditions, what you have is you have a uniform strain. Because there is no reason why a section would deform differently from any other section. So you have a uniform strain at every section. If the strain is uniform and is not a function of x, then you can write simply this as the strain in bar 1 or the strain in bar 2. And you can write that delta 1 is equal to the strain in bar 1 times the length of bar 1, which is l. And you can write that the elongation of bar 2 is equal to the strain in bar 2 times the length of bar 2. So elongation of one bar uh, equal to strain times the length, you can do that only under this very special condition. So if you do something like this, then you can write this relationship here as epsilon 1 times the length of the bar equal to epsilon 2 times the length of the bar. And this is another way in which you can write compatibility. And of course, this means that epsilon 1 is equal to epsilon 2 in this very special example. Okay, So all these relationships here, as you see, have only to do with displacement, elongation, and strains. Those are compatibility relationships. And sometimes you may have more complicated structures, like this one. If you have a structure like this, and this is a rigid block, and I put my x-axis this way, then I can play the same game. I can say the displacement of the block, u star. So now, if you have to do u star, which way do you do u star? You do not say u star goes that way because p goes that way. x goes that way, so you define always the displacement positive according to each convention. So to its convention, so u star is positive this way. So that's your u star. 
And then you play the same game that we played over here. So you can say the elongation of this bar is the displacement of the suction at the end of the bar minus the displacement of the suction at the beginning of the bar. So you can say that the elongation of bar 1, this is again bar 1, and this is bar 2. The elongation of bar 1 is going to be u at this end, which is u star, minus u at the beginning, which is the wall, so it's 0, so it's u star. And you can say that delta 2 is equal to the displacement at the, the end of the bar. And that's also u star, because this, this section here is also attached to the rigid block. So delta 2 is u star minus the displacement at the beginning of the bar, and that's 0. So delta 2 is also u star. And you see again that delta 1 is equal to delta 2. The constraint between the elongation between the two bars did not change because the block was a weird shape and the two bars have a different length. They're attached to the same block. The block moves. They have the same elongation. Okay. So what is the difference between this case and this case? The difference is that the, dif the length now of the bars are the same. So bar 1 is going to have length L1, and bar 2 is going to have length L2. And L1 and L2 are not the same. So what it means is now that if I write delta 1 is equal to epsilon 1 times L1, and if I write delta 2 equal to epsilon 2 times L2, what I find is that epsilon 1 L1 is equal to epsilon 2 L2. And so the relationship between the strain is more complicated than this relationship. The strains in the two bars are not the same, because the bar that has the shorter length, L1, needs to have a higher strain in order to get to the same elongation as the other bar. OK, so that's the equation for this problem here. And let's consider a case now in which you have two blocks that move. So we have three bars, bar 1, bar 2, and bar 3 of length L1, L2, and L3. And they're connected through these rigid blocks. And I put the rigid blocks just so that it's clear. In reality, I could just say they're connected at two sections where the forces are applied. But just to keep things in mind, let's call them, let's consider like these rigid blocks in between. So again, say that this block moves by a certain amount u star, and this block moves by a certain amount u tilde. And I put them in this direction because, again, I'm choosing the x-axis going that way. And you may choose a global x-axis on problems like this, in which you have a single x-coordinate that applies to every single bar. Or if you like to think of x going from 0 to l in each of the bars, nobody prevents you from, if you want, defining local coordinate system x1, x2, and x3 along the three bar, x1 equals 0 to l1, 0 to l2, 0 to l3 for the three coordinate system. You choose the coordinate system that you like best. But whatever coordinate system you use, you can always write that the elongation of bar 1 is going to be the displacement of this section at the end of the bar minus the displacement of this section at the beginning of the bar. So the displacement of this section here is simply u star. So I can write it as u star minus the displacement at the beginning of the, of the bar, which is 0, because it's a wall. So delta 1 is u star minus 0. Now, if I do delta 2, the elongation of bar 2, delta 2, that is the displacement at the end of the bar, which is this guy over here, minus the displacement at the beginning of the bar. So the displacement at the end of the bar is attached to the block, so it's going to be u tilde. And the displacement at the beginning of the bar is attached to this other block, so that's u star. So it's u tilde minus u star. The elongation of this bar is the displacement at the end of the bar, x equal l, l3, which is 0, minus the displacement at the beginning of the bar, which is u tilde. And so these guys here give you all the displacements, the connection between all the displacements of the block and the elongation of the three bars. Uh, if you notice, if I, if I sum delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3, if I write delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3, you see I have u star plus u tilde minus u star minus u tilde. You see that delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 gives you a nice fat 0. So the sum of the elongation of the three bars is 0. Why is that? Well, because even if these things, the forms and the cards move whatever way, whichever way they're moving, 
the whole system is stuck between two rigid walls. The total length of the whole system cannot change. The block do not change length because they are rigid. So in order for them to remain snug between these two walls, between in a, in a total uh, length that does not change, the elongation of all the bars must sum up to nothing. They must all cancel out to maintain the same total length. So typically, if I tell you what is the compatibility constraint for this structure over here, you would tell me the sum of the elongation must be 0 because they are stuck between the walls. But if you wanted in terms of displacement, then you would write it that way. And then if instead of writing it in terms of displacement and elongation, you want to write it in terms of strain, then you can write your standard delta 1 is equal to epsilon 1 L1, delta 2 is equal to epsilon 2 L2, delta 3 is equal to epsilon 3 L3. And then you can take these three things and you can sub, uh, sub them into any of these relationships to get strain in terms of displacement. Or in this case, you're going to find an equivalent uh, compatibility constraint that epsilon 1 L1 plus epsilon 2 L2 plus epsilon 3 L3 is equal to 0. And so that is your compatibility relationship in terms of the strains and the length of the bars. So in all these cases here, we have been using the relationship that the elongation is equal to the strain times the length because the strain was constant along the bar. The bars are uniform length, uh, uniform cross section, and constant uh, axial force resultant. Be careful if you have a problem like this. You, if you have a problem like this, in which you have a distributed load along the length of the bar, do not get messed up by the fact that you say, "Oh, the bar is uniform. I have." Uh, uniform uh, cross-sectional area, have uniform material, so I can write uh, this relationship relating strain to elongation. Because the problem is that because of this, this uh, distributed loading over here, you have dn dx equal to minus f0, not 0. So n is not constant in this problem here. So n changes n varies with x. So because n varies with x, then the strain and the cross section is constant, then the strain, uh, the strain in uh, bar 1 is a function of x, is not constant. Not, oops, not constant. So in this problem here, we can write the, uh, so the geometry of this is the same as the geometry of that. So we can still write a relationship between the elongation that delta 1 is equal to delta 2. But then delta 1, the elongation of bar 1, I need to write this as the integral from 0 to L of epsilon 1 as a function of x in the x. And that's equal to delta 2. And delta 2 is like, the strain in bar 2 is constant. So I can simply write it as epsilon 2 times L. But be careful then going from elongation to strain, that if the strain is not constant along the length of the bar, you need to write a little more complicated relationship to connect the uh, strains in the two bars. Okay, So that's it. Those basically are the basic idea for compatibility for bars in axial loading. Remember that in all these relationships, the only quantities that you get at the end are quantities that have to do with the length of the bar, the displacement at the end of the bar, the elongation of the bar, the strains in the bar, and that's it. Only things that have to do with geometry. No stresses, no material properties, nothing of that sort. Okay? So that's compatibility. Good.